to another good life. Great good life. And you know, this is a good life. I don't know if you are living the good life, but you can live the good life. That's true. And we're going to be talking to some people today, uh, Peter and Fiona Horobin, and they're going to be telling us how you can live the good life. And you say, oh, my life is in shambles. Then you need to watch. <laughs> you know, they know how to put Humpty Dumpty together they again. They do, by the grace of God. God Amen. God gifted them. If you've gone through trauma, accident, whatever, shock, you need to stay tuned and watch this. If you know of anyone that has, it really needs a deep root healing, watch this program. You'll be blessed. And today we have a special treat. Yes. Gloria Elliott is with us. She's been singing for us the whole 37 years <laughs> or 8 years. And uh, she's going to be with us today. Yes. And her voice is still good. Wonderful. I don't understand <laughs> that. It must be. It must be God. <laughs> it must be a gift of God. That's right. And she's going to sing a beautiful song. How great is our God. The splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light you know the darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice it trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me oh how great is our God and all will see how Lord, you 
are worthy of all praise, of all adoration. All glory be to you, Lord. It's the name above all names. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are worthy, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing. Come on, sing it. The name above all things. It's so true, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, worthy, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing. How great, how great is our God. One last time. to have Peter, Fiona, and Sarah with us today. All three of them are going to challenge us, and everyone needs a good challenge today. <laughs> but we're going to find out about their ministry. It's so good to have you with us. Yes. Thank you. And uh, Pleased to be here. Tell us how El Al began and why it began? Well, the story goes back a long way because when I was in my 20s, I was really enthusiastic about uh, old British sports cars. And uh, there's a particular car I wanted and uh, they were so expensive, I knew I, I would never be able to afford one. And then a friend rang me up and said, are you still looking for a Speed 20? And uh, I said, yes, why? He said, I've got one for you. And I said, how much? <laughs> he said, 50 pounds, which was an absolute bargain. I said, I'll have it, before I asked what was wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, well, it was stolen, it was crashed, it was vandalised, it was set on fire, and then it was dumped in the River Mersey. He said, it's cost me 50 pounds to get it out of the river, and you can have it for what I paid for it. And so I acquired this wreck, absolute wreck of a car, and I began to dismantle it and I got down to the bare chassis and I saw that the steel was bent. In the crash it had been bent on the chassis and you, you can't drive that sort of car safely. Oh. And I began to cry, it was four o'clock in the morning in the garage, I was covered with grease from head to foot. I was thinking I'll never be able to restore this old car. And I was suddenly aware of the presence of God in the garage with me. And he was speaking to me and he said, you, you could restore this broken car. He said, but I can restore broken lives. And then he asked me a simple question, which is more important, broken car or broken lives? And the very fact that I got the right answer is why we're here today, because all these years later, God used that picture to vision me with the whole healing ministry. Uh, Jesus initiated himself to come to heal the brokenhearted. And 30 years ago, the work started at a place called LL. And that's why it's called LL Ministries. It's the name of the village. It also means in Hebrew, going towards God. I was going to say, so that sounds yeah. very 
Hebraic yeah, to me. It's, it's, it's a, a great name. In old English, it means all hail Jesus, too. So, oh. yes. so that's what we are. That's well, did you fun. ever fix the car? The car is still a work in process. Still? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it, mechanically, it's okay, but it, it needs a lot of work on its body. <laughs> But uh, people's lives are more important than broken cars. Yes, they are. Well, we want to know, and especially why is Sarah here with you today? Is she uh, one of your broken cars? <laughs> <laughs> well, w w when I saw the, the, the wreck of the car, uh, and looked at it, God showed me many different situations in people's lives which results in terrible brokenness, of, whether it's abuse and trauma and many different conditions that people have and psychiatric conditions. And when Sarah came to LR Ministries, she came straight out of a psychiatric hospital and there was medically no hope for her. She was on a lifetime disability pension and there was no hope. She would tell her story and today, you talking to her, you wouldn't have any inkling that she'd ever been in psychiatric hospital because God no, has restored her <laughs> in his image and likeness. And it's a beautiful story. Yes. Well, I'm sure the viewers would like to know what you do. So would you just share what you do for the Lord? Uh, as a ministry, we uh, have people who come on us to our centers. There are now 30 different centers around the world. God's taken the, the vision that was established in England and people have come from overseas and they said, we want to have this for our own people. And so there are now centers in Americas and throughout Europe and Eastern Europe and Russia and Africa and Australia and Asia for the Chinese peoples. And you realize there's not many ministries and we have a lot come through here. There's not many ministries that have 30 different branches all over the world. That is amazing. That just shows God's heart, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. He yeah. wants these yes. people restored <laughs> yeah. from yeah. their broken hearts and their trauma. We, we haven't set out to build a big ministry. Mm -hmm. All we've done is followed where God has gone before and where people have been hurting and they've said, we need help then God has changed our lives and they said, we'd like this in our own country. And w one of the areas which has been such a blessing is seeing in Ru Ru Rwanda, in the center of Africa, where the genocide was and teaching the people there about forgiveness and healing that comes out of that. Amazing stories of God's wow. restoration uh, come out of that. And uh, Fiona's stories, uh, uh, God spoke to her very dramatically through an experience of finding a lamb. Lambs. Yeah. Would you share that, yeah. Fiona? Yes. Well, um, we began the ministry back in 1986, really knowing that healing was on God's heart. And without healing, Christians were struggling to really get victory in their lives. And there were so many people had so many issues. And when we um, opened the doors of Alor Grange, we were really quite naive in those days. But then 30 years ago, and we just had to get on our knees and, and say to the Lord, Lord, you know, what are your answers? How do you restore a, a broken life? You're the master craftsman. We've got nowhere else to go except to you. And as we saw the conditions that people had, we, we thought, who is sufficient for all of these things? And we needed to really seek the Lord about that. And for me, it was a very, very key moment because I thought I could do all the behind the work, behind the scenes work, but the Lord had other ideas because one day I was out walking in the fields and um, had a dog and the dog needed to go where the dog needs to go, you know, and it was a wild, wintry day in England. It was a horrible day. And um, I was passing by this field and normally there's a field of sheep but there weren't any sheep to be seen, except at the foot of this particular tree, there was a little gray bundle. And as I looked at this gray bundle, I realized this was a lamb. And I thought, this lamb has been abandoned. I couldn't see the mother anywhere. So I tied up the dog and I climbed over the first fence, then the second barbed wire fence, and I picked up this little lamb 
he was cold and wet, and I put him under my coat. I thought he was dead, but I heard this, meh, meh, and all of a sudden my, my heart leapt. I thought, the lamb's alive. I must get him help. I must get him to the farmer. And we live, um, L.L. Grange Centre is really next door to a, a farm. And uh, I knocked on the farmhouse door, and the farmer answered the door, and he put out his big rugged hands like this, and he, I, he said, give him to me. Give him to me. I'll put him by the fire, and I'll give him a bottle, and he'll soon be back in the fields with his brothers and sisters, right as rain. And at that moment, I was just so happy, rejoicing. I rescued a lamb, <laughs> and this lamb was going to live. But as I walked back to the center, it was like the Spirit of God just came and intervened at that moment and spoke into my heart and into my spirit and said, there are many of my lambs out there in the fields, bleeding and dying with no one to rescue them, no one to find them. I hear their heart cry. Will you go and find them? And will you bring them to me? And it was a watershed moment for me, and I found myself saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. If you help me, I will find them and bring them to you. And as I walked a bit further, I saw that my coat was muddy, and it was torn from the barbed wire. And the Spirit of God came again, and it said, it costs my son everything for those who are lost to me. Yeah. Are you willing to pay the price? And in that moment of the joy of finding the lamb, I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. If you help me, I will. And it was the beginning of a journey, really. And Sarah's just an example of a lamb, a broken, damaged lamb, who was bleeding in the fields, crying from her heart. Help me, help me. And she came through the doors of Vallow Grange and began a journey of being restored from what Peter has already shared, that there were no medical answers. And we sought the Lord on our knees and said, Lord, you're the best psychiatrist. You're the best doctor of the soul. You know your children. Will you come and restore the devastation that's been in Sarah's life? Mm. And we're going to hear about that wonderful restoration coming up, aren't we? And when I met her today for the first time, I thought, what a beautiful person this is. She was just vibrant oh, when you beautiful. shook my hand. And I thought, she's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, that's where beauty comes from. Yeah. comes from the inside. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I thought... Wow, she is so sweet. And uh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and where do you and you come from England also? From the south of England, yes. South of England. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Fiona, you come from Scotland. Well, my 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 mother and my uh, mother's parents were Scottish, but I was born in England. Oh, you were. Yes. <laughs> okay. I have a Scottish name, <laughs> Fiona. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, when people come into your conferences, what can they expect? And who can come to that conference? Is it just for those that have gone through trauma? No, no, no. Uh, uh, the Lord has led us in a, in a wonderful journey of really understanding His Word, that it is practically applicable, not just a, a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge from His Word that's for every one of us, and how to uh, apply all kinds of principles to do with healing, but also discipleship principles that, that in themselves bring about healing, but also healing brings about discipleship. It's yes. mm -hmm. chicken and the egg, and it can be for anybody because we all have the need to know the Lord deep in our hearts and to know his security and his, his presence in our lives. So it's for anybody who just wants to follow the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's an equipping ministry too. It equips people to help others and to go out and, and do the work yes, of the kingdom. Like, yeah. like Sarah and others. Peter, I want to quote something you said. 
if our inner being is broken and hurting, then our body reflects that inner pain. Absolutely. There was a time when we were ministering to someone who was very hurting and very broken, and we became aware that there was part of them that was almost locked away on the inside, which they weren't in touch with. And we didn't quite understand how to relate this to Scripture until the Lord took us to Scripture from Isaiah 61, verse 1, which it said that he has sent me, and this is the prophetic word about the ministry of Jesus, to bind up the brokenhearted. And uh, we wonder, what does that really mean? Uh, in our modern English language, you talk about someone being brokenhearted, they're a bit upset about something. Uh, but in Hebrew, it's very different. Uh, the word broken there is the same word as used when Moses threw the tablets of stone down on the ground and they were shattered into separate pieces. And so a broken-hearted person is someone who has been shattered on the inside as a result of, of the traumas that they've experienced. And if you're trying to struggle through life on the top, as it were, but you've got this inner brokenness on the inside, uh, you're, you're, you're fighting almost against yourself. And unless the inner person comes to wholeness, the outer person won't be able to fully reflect that healing. Uh, okay. When we were in Australia a few years ago and uh, there was a lady there who uh, was crippled in the sense that she couldn't walk very far. Uh, she was on a lifetime disability pension from the Australian government. And uh, we asked her, well, Linda, what, what was your problem? Uh, she said, well, I fell off a cliff three years ago and I broke my back in four places. The doctors have done everything they possibly can for me, but they said there's nothing more we can do. So that's why she had to come out of her nursing job and she was on this lifetime disability pension. And we began to talk to her about the real issues in, inside her, her life and we said, we said could, could we pray for you? And her first reaction was, I don't want anyone to pray for me any, again because I've been prayed for so many times and I'm not being healed. And I don't want to find out again that God doesn't love me. That was her experience. Mm. But the experience that God had given us in terms of healing the broken heart in order that the broken bodies can come to full restoration. You see, she'd fallen off that cliff and when she had the accident, her body was not the only part of her that had the accident. The inner being, the spirit and the soul also had the accident. The doctors, they helicoptered her out uh, in an airlift because uh, she was stuck in a ravine having fallen off the cliff. And the doctors treated the body but they didn't treat the soul and the spirit, the inner being, which is also broken. And when we prayed for her that night at this conference, which was actually full of doctors and medics who were there for a Christian healing conference, and the Lord healed the inner being. That part of her, which was broken three years previously, the Lord restored and brought her together. And then we prayed for physical healing. And the physical healing followed the healing of the inner brokenness. God put her back together as he intended. And Praise that God. night she was completely healed physically. Wow. Um, it was, she, she, she's off her lifetime physical pension. Uh, she went back to work as a nurse, got married and has got three children. Uh, wow. The Lord's completely restored her life. Wow, what a... Because she was considering suicide when she... Uh, oh, but the pain medication absolutely. she had to take for the pain was yeah, just... Yeah, she said the pain, the pain was unbearable. so great. Yeah. And the medication was so awful mm -hmm. that uh, what's the point of living? Yeah. Well, we're going to come back and uh, find out more about this fantastic ministry that is worldwide. And right after, Gloria sings again for us. Terry Tripp's Empower Minute. What if every day you got up, I deposited $1,440 in your bank account? You could use it any way you wanted. Here's the catch. At the close of each day, the balance not used 
would be canceled, couldn't be saved or held over. But the next day, another $1,440. Think of all you could do. The truth is, each day you are credited with 1,440 minutes, free to use any way you choose. You can't save it, can't hold on to it, but like your money, the next day you get another 1,440 minutes. Learn to value time. Live every moment with passion. I want to encourage you to support this station financially. Take a minute and help empower others with God's Word. This song I used to sing in my dad's church growing up. I sang earlier, how great is our God? Well, how real is our God? Our Jesus who heals the broken hearts. He's real, he's real today. There are some things I may not know. Mm, and there are some places that I just cannot go. But this one thing I know for sure. Listen up. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. My God is real. My God is real. He's real in my soul. He's real in my soul. My God is real. For he has washed and made me whole. Listen to this line. His love for me and for you is like pure gold. Oh, yes, my God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. I cannot tell you just how I felt when Jesus washed all my sins away. I can tell you this, since that day, since that day yes, since that, hour, since that hour, my God's been real, for I can feel His holy Power. Sing it with me. Come on, everybody. My God is real. He's real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me, yes, indeed, it's like pure gold. Oh, yes, my God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Sing it, Bob. Come on. My God is real. My God is real. He's real in my soul. He's real in my soul. My God is real. For he has washed and made me whole. His love for me. Don't you love this line? It's like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Oh, Gloria, that was beautiful. My God is real. Is your God real to you? He, we know that he's real, but some of you don't act like you know him and you know that he is real. And he can do anything. Can you imagine knowing a person that can do anything? Well, when you know God, you'll understand. God can do anything. That's right. Amen. And we're going to talk a, a little Sarah. bit <laughs> with Sarah and tell us the pathway you were on and where you are today. 
Well, uh, <laughs> it's a long story, but I'll try and keep it succinct. Um, it's lovely to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I used to ask that question, really. Can God really heal me? We're talking about God being real. And that was a real question in my heart. Can he really heal me? I was in a psychiatric hospital. Um, I was diagnosed with severe clinical depression. I was bulimic. Um, uh, I was uh, bent on killing myself, really. I hated myself so much mm. and really believed, even though I was married and I had a good husband and still do, praise God, <laughs> and two lovely children, but I just believed they'd be better off without me. I was in a really dark, dark place. And um, my uh, vicar, my pastor at the time, was a lovely man, and he used to come and visit me in hospital and was trying to help me, but he didn't have the answers. And I'm so grateful he knew about LL Ministries. And so he got in touch with Peter and Fiona Horobin and uh, asked if there would be a place for me to come. And so um, it was arranged for me to go on a healing retreat. Actually, the hospital were not very happy. I was in a locked ward in the psychiatric hospital. And the prognosis was that I would always be under psychiatric care. I was on the maximum dosages of um, several different types of medication. Um, I was having cognitive behavioural therapy. Um, now, you'd been there for months, hadn't you? I had been there for months, yes, yes, right. yeah. But when you first got in there, I read, you thought you'd be out in just a few days, <laughs> maybe a couple of weeks? Yeah, yeah, I still remember that. I remember saying to the psychiatrist, you know, how long will I be in here? And, and really honestly thinking, I, I, it was, I think it was a Wednesday, and I thought I would be out by the weekend, and it was in September. And his answer to me was, well, with a fair wind, maybe you can go home at Christmas. I nearly fell off the chair. I was so shocked because I was in unreality, really. I didn't, I, I didn't think I needed to be there. I thought that, you know, I, 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 I was just attention seeking and, and I, I really just needed to go home. In fact, a funny story, my vicar said to me when I told him that and he'd come to visit me, he said, Julie, you're, sorry, Sarah, you're not that stupid and we're not that clever. No, sorry. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> he said, Sarah, you're not that clever and we're not that stupid. <laughs> and in my heart, I thought, I am and you are. <laughs> I really thought that I didn't need to be there. But actually, I was in a really bad place and I did need to be there. And I thank God for the psychiatrist because he kept me alive and he wrote the forward for my book. But he introduced me to LL Ministries and uh, so grateful because it was the beginning, really, of my journey to healing. Mm. Um, in the hospital, they'd treated symptoms, but when I came to LL Ministries, we never, ever prayed about the symptoms, but they began to talk to me about how God saw me and who I was in God's eyes and the plan that the enemy had to not just destroy my life, but his plan for many, many people's lives, isn't it, that he wants to destroy. Yes. And it was through the abuse that I suffered as a child uh, my father began to abuse me when I was three years old, all the way through until I left home at 18. He was sexually abusing me. And um, as Peter just explained about having a, a shattered personhood, that was what I had. But and you so had blocked that out, hadn't you? I you had, had blocked all that blocked out. out. Well, all the, the traumas of the, of the past were, were locked in the brokenness. And um, it was when I, when I came to LL Ministries and first of all, we, we looked at things like forgiveness, which was a huge area for me, mm -hmm. um, and, and those kingdom principles. But even better than that, uh, uh, there came a point, another funny story really, where I really had tried to make a methodology out of my healing. I always tried, because I'd been made to feel so bad as a child, I believed I was bad. So I lived my life trying to compensate, trying to be a good person and even took it into my Christian walk to be a good Christian and do all the things that I thought a Christian should do. You were a church secretary. I was, <laughs> yes, and I tried to be the best secretary, you know. I was trying so hard because I really believed I was like an apple that was beautiful on the outside but rotten in the middle. So I had to try, try, try to earn my, fa not just favour with other people but with God. And um, that was how I saw God. He was a big God in the sky with a stick that, you know, if I stepped out of line, thunderbolt would come down on me, you know. And, and so when I went to LL Ministries, I took all of that into the ministry. So if they asked me to pray a prayer, I prayed the prayer. If they asked me to read the Bible, I read the Bible. And I did everything, but was kind of turning healing into 
my healing journey into a methodology. And, um, and actually the, the team became, became very used to me being a very compliant, good counsellee. And then one day I just sat there and something on the inside was, was just so frustrated. And as I sit there, sat there, having been so compliant, suddenly, you know when something comes out of your mouth and you just want to put it back in again, <laughs> you wish you'd never said it, and this bubbled up from the inside and I, it blurted out, I'm not a ministry machine, I'm a person. And everybody went, oh, like this. And even I went, oh, like this. And I wanted to put it back in. But actually, it was the cry of my heart. And I'm so grateful because the team didn't respond in the way that I thought they would, as in, well, where did that come from? <laughs> but they were listening to God. And God said to them, she's a person. She isn't a ministry machine. And she needs relationship. And I'm so grateful because up until that time, I just copied what everybody else did. I'd lost so much of myself. And that's true for so many people. When you've been yes. abused, you lose yourself. You don't know who you are. There's, there's, you're just that operating out of a shell. And, and so we began to do creative things, um, which is so out of the box, really, isn't it? You know, you think of sitting and praying forgiveness and repentance, and those are good things. But sitting and doing creative things together. And so we had some old seashells somewhere in Allel Grange. They somehow had got these old seashells. And um, they were big old barnacled scallop shells. So the team got some paints. And I must admit, at that point, I thought, oh, why did I ever say it? I just would like to read the Bible and pray the prayers. It <laughs> feels a lot, a lot more in my comfort zone. But we started to, or the team started to paint the shells. And to be perfectly honest, I was quite frustrated. I thought, I, you know, I'm here to get healed and we're sitting painting shells. What's the point? <laughs> but I began to see that people were choosing different colours. And where before, if someone liked pink, I like pink. If they like blue, I like blue. There was no right or wrong. And they were laughing together. And, and we were just doing something not for the end product. Like I'd always pursued the end product of healing. And, you know, I, had, I was on a treadmill. I've got to get healed so I can minister to other people and I can teach people. And God was saying, that might come, but I'm interested in you as a person and the relationship. And it wasn't about this end product of healing, but it was about me being me in relationship with my Heavenly Father. Yes. And it came about through that just being family love. together and love. And they loved you, didn't yeah. they? You yeah. talk about that love. Yeah. Would you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Well... For me, love had such bad connotations. For me, love was abuse. And, and so when they began to talk to me about God's love, I was quite angry. And when they would say they loved me, I would be angry. Because it felt to me like love was a, if you put a rug on the floor, and they were saying, you can stand on that rug, it will sustain you for life. But I was so afraid if I stood on that rug called love, someone would come along and pull it out from under my feet. Mm. When your trust has been broken, you don't easily trust again. Even if everybody tells you, you know, God's a, a God of love and he loves you and it's unconditional and it'll sustain you for life. You know, when you've been abused and when trust has been broken, you're not easily going to stand on that rug. Yeah. But over time, the spirit of God was at work. I'm so grateful because it's all about him. You know, we, we all have our weaknesses and, and our struggles. How long did it take you to get what you call and what I would call healing. Yeah. How long did that take? Yeah, it's, it's, well, I have to answer it honestly. It was a long journey. It actually took 10 years, um, but it was right. a pioneering journey for this ministry. And as Fiona said, they were sometimes on their knees crying out to the Lord, you know, how do we help her? When God said she needs relationship, they said, well, Lord, how do we teach her relationship? We didn't have the keys in those days. And so there was, a, 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 an out of it, you know, Fiona's book, Intercession and Healing, crying out to the Lord, we don't know what to do. Will you show us? And, and he began to show things like the, the key of creativity, which completely bypasses the mind. I was trying to use my mind, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? Give me the tick boxes. Um, and, and, and God showed, no, it's, it's, it's the, the spirit. I want to 
restore her in her spirit. And out of that, we now have a course which we call uh, Restoring the Human Spirit. Another one called God's Amazing Grace because I was so legalistic. And the Lord began to show, Julie, you don't, Sarah, you don't need to be right up against the edge of the sheepfold. You know, there's grace, come into the middle. I had to learn all about his grace. So there's a lot of pioneering along the way, which was why the journey took so long. And I'm not unrealistic that people get healed just like that. <laughs> and you connected to the truth. And you said healing takes place when you connect to the truth. Yes. And that's what happened to you. Yes. It was a process. Mm -hmm. But as you took the word of God in and you were loved yeah. unconditionally. Yeah. Wow. And you connected to the truth of yeah. the word of God. Yes. Yeah. Bit by bit, the Lord was healing Sarah's personhood, mm -hmm. her inner being that had been so crushed and trashed. And he was rebuilding her whole identity. And there were things like gifting that was buried on the inside. She didn't even know she had because life was just an existence and a survival. It yeah. wasn't living. Even though she knew Jesus, it was very much out of her head and not really f knowing it in her heart because of all the abuse. So in a way, that God is merciful when he rebuilds those waste places in a, in a journey of life. Amen. He can't just do it in one big ministry session, although we are seeing a wonderful increase now of that kind of healing. But your life was restored, wasn't it? Mm. Just um, really from the inside really recreated as you were intended to be by the maker. Mm. Mm. Amen. And now, do you feel you're totally healed? Well, we have to be realistic, don't we? I think all of us are on, and we're never, we're never completely healed till we go to be with the Lord. That's the answer um. I wanted you to give. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but I feel that the issues of my past are reconciled, and yeah. that's... That's, that's, wonderful. that's the wonderful thing. They're the, no longer an issue, are they? The pain of the past doesn't have power over me anymore. Yes. And that's the wonderful thing. Praise. You don't carry those razor blades around with you anymore. I definitely <laughs> do not. <laughs> and Praise no more God. drugs either. No, no. How long have you been off um, drugs? I was, the, the prognosis was that I would always be on psychiatric medication for the rest of my life. But I haven't taken any psychiatric drugs for more than 10 years now. Praise oh, God. Really off your lifetime disability. Yeah, I was also on a lifetime's pension. And when I uh, went to the doctor to say, could you give me a letter to say that I don't need to be on this? He said, oh, you need to, you know, you need to get in touch with the psychiatrist. So I contacted the psychiatrist and he told me to write to the authorities. When I wrote to them, they ignored the letter because it was, I was going to be on it forever. So I wrote a second time, and the second time they sent me back to the psychiatrist. And eventually, they finally sent me a letter saying, well, okay, we will stop se you know, sending you this check every month. But if you ever need to come back on it, you just need to let us know, and you can go straight back on. And we're in an economic climate where they're wanting to get people off the benefits. So oh, I just, it's just all glory to God. Do you yes. feel suicidal? Never. 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 I love depressed? life. <laughs> no. Ever I'm depressed? full of life, never depressed. Yeah. Praise God. But it's out of the relationship with him. Amen. There was an emptiness inside that only he could meet. Amen. And he's the one who's filled that space now. Praise God. We're going to take another break and Glory's going to come back and minister in music. And if you say, how can I get to a place like this? We'll give you the answer in just a couple minutes.
Jesus, God. Press in today. You need healing in your life after hearing what God has done for her. He can do the same for you today. But you have to press in and believe, expect. The Lord's right there waiting for you to turn it all to Him. When fear and doubt come against your mind and your faith is so Just lift up your eyes. Here cometh your help. It is Jesus for you. He died. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen. If by faith you'll just reach out to him, he can meet your every need. Listen, folks, my Jesus will respond to the cry of your heart. Yes, he will. He will touch you and set you free. But you must rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, let faith arise in your soul. talking to Peter and Fiona and Sarah, and we want you to know how you, maybe you feel maybe like Sarah, and how can you get this healing? Now, how do they get it in this country and other countries? Because this program goes over many countries. That's right. Well, the first thing is up now that there is go on the website. And uh, the website gives details of all the availability of courses and the resources, uh, both books and things you can get online as well. And uh, every centre has healing retreats where we invite people to apply for a healing retreat for coming to face the issues in their life. And uh, scripture the Lord gave me many years ago, Luke 9, 11, Jesus welcomed the people. He taught them about the kingdom of God and he ministered healing to those in need. And those three things, the welcome is the love, 
Yes. The teaching of the kingdom is that which we need to receive in order to get our lives in order so we can then walk into healing. And for, for example, forgiveness is such a foundational kingdom principle. And many people are, they're looking for healing, but they're not willing to deal with unforgiveness and bitterness in the heart. Mm -hmm. And so those are the basic sort of principles we teach on the healing retreats. And there are many training courses that people can go on. And our hearts cry is that every local church should be the local hospital yes. for yes. believers who want to get healed. So that, yes, we, we thank God for the medical profession, we thank God for all that they do, but they can't deal with the issues of the heart and the issues of the soul. And where those are at the root of problems that people have, then they need to be faced with God's order in their lives. And the website, I'm sure we've had it up on the screen, but you need to write it down. Now, don't put it off. Write it down and then make that call and find where you can get plugged in and God will deliver you. I don't think there's any question about that. He wants to That's right. bring he deliverance to. to you. That's his heart. No matter what you're going through, it is not impossible. And you say, well, Bob, you don't know. But I do know God who says there is nothing impossible That's for right. me and there isn't anything. So you write that down and get involved in L. Al. Yes. And there are many books, that, uh, several books you've written. These are just two of what you call the Truth and Freedom series. Right. Yes. We've talked today about healing from the consequences of Accident, Shock, and Trauma by Peter, and then Fiona has written Intercession and Healing. And you said those two go hand in hand. They're inseparable. But the Truth and Freedom series, and I'll tell you in the back of the book, there are just uh, several, several books that you've written. The, I don't seem right. Well, here's one. Trapped by Control, Sex, God's Truth, um, God's Covering, A Place of Healing, Anger, how to handle it, hope, and healing for the abused. I mean, several books are the dangers of alternative ways to healing. I'd like to read that because there are many alternative ways and they're not of God. Mm -hmm. so, yes, and Peter's written the book, Healing Through Deliverance, yes. which yes. is uh, a very important key and certainly a very big part of Sarah's healing was the deliverance ministry because Amen. it's the enemy who is the father of lies who's the robber of our destiny yeah. and our mm -hmm. identity and if we don't really if we're ignorant of his devices then he, he can just wipe away our lives he can take a root in our lives so we really believe in healing through deliverance Amen. So some, well, some churches struggle with the idea of <clears throat> ministering deliverance uh, to Christians, to believers, uh, but they sometimes perhaps overlook the Lord's Prayer, which he gave to disciples, which it says in that prayer, deliver us from evil. And that, that's the cry yes. of our hearts, to be set free from all the control of the enemy, all the presence of darkness, so that we may, in his light, become, as the Isaiah scripture talks about, beauty for ashes. The, yes. the ashes of Sarah's life are now manifest in the beauty of who she is today. Yes, yeah. beautiful. Now, how are you supported? You've got this gigantic ministry all over the world. <laughs> faith. It, it, it is totally a faith walk. Uh, before the work started, God spoke to me very clearly saying, you must never charge for counseling ministry, for prayer ministry. Uh, at all, healing uh, retreats. The, or healing retreats. So we've had, we've done well over 3,000 residential healing retreats, and we never charge for anybody to come on the healing retreats. But we charge for the courses that people come to train. So the income from the courses helps, but we depend totally on free will giving uh, to support the work. Really? Yes. So you must have a lot of people yes. if you're going to have all of these. 
branches. Well, it's, it's, it's a daily walk of faith. And sometimes, to be honest, it's a, it's a struggle of faith sometimes, uh, the reality. But uh, God does meet the needs. And he, he opens the doors. He encourages you to walk through them. And then he becomes the provider. He's never provided before we've walked through the doors. <laughs> we have to walk in faith. And then yeah. God says, now you're walking in my direction. Trust me to be the provider for whatever direction the work is, whether it's in Eastern Europe or Russia or Australia, or China or Asia or whatever. Mm. We have two minutes. There are people watching that don't know Jesus. What would you say to that one that does not know Jesus? Jesus is the key to everything. He came to show us what the Father is like. God the Father loves as Jesus loved. He healed, he set the captives free, and we need to know him personally. And it's a, a huge privilege to be able to just tell others what Jesus has done for Sarah and, and for many others. That when he is our savior and he's our Lord and he heals our broken hearts, then we are like prisoners coming out of prison. And uh, this is what the scripture talks about. He came to set the captives free. Jesus is savior, he's healer, he's deliverer. And I would urge people just get to know him and to find out more about what he can do for them as he has already died on the cross for them and as we give our lives to him and we serve him and he loves us and we love him then it's a re healing relationship amen fall in love with jesus that's the key yes. mm -hmm. fall yes. in love with yes. jesus yes. Yes. And yeah. he'll do the rest. Yeah. Mm. Yes. But you've got to invite him in. Yes. The Bible <laughs> says, for as many as received him, they were given the power to become a child of God. Mm. So since he's a gift, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, you just receive him. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I invite you now to come in and be Lord of my life. I give you my life. Watch what happens, friends. Just mean it from your heart. Amen. 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 God bless you, and we thank the Horbins and Sarah yes, thank you so for much. coming and being with us. And may God richly bless you. Yes, amen. Amen. God bless you all.